This is a quick video on how to use the use scroll hook in Framer Motion to add scroll based animations to your project. So what we want is this scroll animation, which looks really slick. And so what happens is as we approach this section and we scroll down, they sort of grow into the view here, right? So both their opacity as well as their scale is animated based on scrolling. And we can also very easily do this with Framer Motion. So what we can do, I'm gonna make this a little bit wider. We need to go to the project, individual project components, not the whole section. And here we're gonna use Framer Motion. So Framer Motion has a hook called use scroll that we can use. And let's actually import that. Let's see if we get the suggestion here, control spacebar, no. So I will import it manually here. And actually Copilot also doesn't know where it should come from. Well, we'll say import scroll from Framer Motion. Okay, okay, now we need to give this hook two inputs, actually just one options object, but with two uh, properties. So it needs to know the target element and it needs to have the, uh, the actual HTML reference. So we're gonna, have, we're gonna have to use use ref as well. I'll just leave this as a string for now. And then also an offset property. So this offset, it's gonna be an array. What that means is when, when we actually want to start animating, right? So we're gonna have a target. So the, the individual project is gonna be a so-called target. And then we also have a container and that's actually the viewport, right? So the viewport is whatever you see here of the, of the page. And so what you have to specify here is at what point do you want to basically start the animation? So here we wanna start as soon as the end of the container, end of the viewport reaches the top of the target, right? So that's what we can specify here. So here we can say uh, in a string, zero and then one. So that means when the bottom of the viewport crosses the top of the target, which is the project, that's when, it, that's when the animation should start. And when should it end? Well, it should end when the, the bottom of the viewport has, has, has gone 33% beyond the end of the project. So that's what we can specify like this. It takes a bit to wrap your mind around this. You don't really have to understand this. You can always look up the documentation, but that's how this offset property works. Okay, so then we need to provide a ref here to the actual project here, this section element that actually should be uh, animated. So here we're gonna use the use ref hook, right? So here actually uh, Paula Copilot already suggests this for me. We're gonna say is use ref, and typically we'll start off with a value of null. And let's actually import this. I'm gonna place my cursor here. And actually we get use ref snippets, but that's something else, it's from an extension. So I will import it manually here, use ref. Okay, so now we, um, we get some issues here if we look here. So this should be a client component. And now it gets interesting because if we look at the overall project section, this is not really doing anything interactive. This is basically just presentational markup here. It's only the individual project here that now we start to use these hooks. And uh, we, we really need to at least have this as a client component. Now, what, what will happen is if I make this use clients here, both of these components will now be client components. So even though actually technically only this project one has to be a client component. Right? And ideally we can, we can keep everything or as much as possible a, uh, running on a server only, right? So a server component. So here what we can do is instead of using use client here at the top, in which case, if we do that, this will also become a client component, which is not necessary because this is not really doing anything interactive. It's just mapping over data and then using the project uh, component here, which actually does need to be a client component because here we need interactivity. We need uh, client side uh, functionalities here. So I propose that we actually put this in its own file. So we can create a new file here, simply called project singular, and then we can just copy this. Right, so let's just copy the entire component into that new file. So, and actually also the type above it. Right, so make sure you also copy the type for the props. And I'm gonna paste that right here. And we get a bunch of errors because uh, we need to import uh, the proper uh, things here. So let's see, if I put the, the cursor here, control spacebar or command spacebar, you should be able to import everything automatically actually because uh, it's already imported here. So uh, it should be able to deduce from that. Actually use ref here. It's not importing for me, so I'm going to type it myself. Actually, we get some suggestions, but uh, I want to use ref. 
Okay, you scroll. I'm going to put my cursor here. Also, we have to... Actually, we can also just copy it here. Um, actually, we need everything except the, the, the top three. All right, so we can remove this. Okay, so now we have all the necessary imports. Now remember, this needs to become a client component, right? So the only thing we have to do is say use client. And now this is a client component, um, but we need to export this. And we're going to make this the default export here. So we're going to say export default. Okay, so we're, we're making this the default export and we can import it here. And we can also remove, we can also remove these imports because we're not using that here anymore. Also the use ref. And then we need to import the actual project and that should be easy. Right, we can just uh, import it automatically like that. And right, it's a it's a default export, so we don't need to use the Colibrezas. All right, so now if we save here and see if that works, or at least if we can get rid of the uh, error. Okay, so still loading. And it looks like it's working. Right, so it's still working here. And right, so now it's a small optimization, of course, but if we look on the page, everything in the app directory is a server component by default. So here we're importing projects. Projects itself does not have use client. So this will now also be a server component, but this is importing a client component and we're using that here, right? And the client component will have the actual you know, functionalities and client side features, right? So the way to think about it is basically anything that is presentational is gonna be a server component. Right? So this is more presentational. We're just mapping over some uh, data. We have some we have a div here and a section and a heading. It's quite static. Now then we have this component, which is more interactive, right? So the interactive components are going to be client components usually, right? And you want to put, you want to use as many server, com you want to keep components, server components if you can. Sometimes that means refactoring the client components to a new file. And so you, if you look at, if you imagine a React tree, so tree of components, you want to keep the client components more towards the, the edges of the tree, right? So really at the leaves of the tree. And sometimes that requires some refactoring. All right, so let's continue here in the uh, project uh, component now. So it needs to know the target. Right? So that's why we created this ref. Now about the type of this ref, um, well, let's actually just add the ref. So you can just go here and you can say ref is ref. Okay, now if we hover this, you can see it's trying to infer a particular type of this reference, but it's not, it's not really showing us that it's actually going to be this uh, section. Right, so here we can we can supply the type ourselves. So we can ha use these angled brackets and we can specify this is going to be an HTML section element, okay? And actually that uh, doesn't seem to be familiar to TypeScript. So cannot find name, HTML section elements. Hmm. Okay, so it looks like there is no special HTML section element type. We should use the more uh, general HTML element type. So some of these HTML elements, they have their own types, like HTML div exists, but not HTML section. So they only create new types if the type needs some special behavior or special properties. So the section element didn't need special type typing uh, properties. So there's no uh, special type for that. But for some elements like div, there actually are, because they need some special stuff for some reason. Okay, so I just Googled that actually. I don't know that by the top of my head. Sometimes you need to Google it. Okay, so... Now we can see that this ref is going to be ref object and it knows more specific now that's going to be it's going to be an HTML element. Okay, so this, this that's going to be the target, right? So we have the target here. We can just provide the ref, not ref current. We actually need to provide the whole ref. All right, so that's what we need to provide to this use scroll hook. Now, what do we get back from that hook? What we get back is the pro scroll y progress so scroll y progress is what we get back so basically an indicator of how far we've scrolled and that's what we can now use to animate this so we do have to make this a motion component so i'm going to make this a motion dot section component let's make sure that the closing tag is also correct yeah we need to import that let's see if that finally works nope so we have to import this manually motion okay and then the trick is almost finished here we can use the style prop so just like uh, CSS styling, and we can just do scale, for example, as well as opacity. Let's see if no, opacity should also be conform the progress of the scrolling. That's a bit of setup here, but now that the scale and the opacity CSS values will depend on how far we've scrolled. At least that's the theory. Let's double check if it actually works. You can already see that it seems to work, right? Now you can see it's not so smooth, but at least 
we're on the right track here. Now it's not very smooth, and I actually didn't know why it's not smooth. Sometimes it happens with frame or motion that uh, things don't work as smoothly as, as, as you think they should. So what I tried here is to just wrap everything in a div here and just animate that div. So let's actually do that. So we'll, we'll keep this section. It's just going to be a normal section element. And we're just going to wrap everything in a div. We're going to put everything in a div, and that's the div that we're actually going to animate. And that usually solves the issue if it's not smooth in frame or motion for me. So here... Uh, we need to copy the ref and the style to that div now. And now it's, uh, let's see. Yeah, so now it's not just a general HTML element. Now we can change the type to HTML div element, right? So make sure you change that. Now, because we change this, we also need to change this margin on the bottom, right? So now uh, let's quickly change that as well. So class name. So here we added some margin on the bottom. Yeah, so margin bottom three, smmb8, and thus last pseudo class that should now go to this div but that actually uh, they have some space between them and then let's see what's going on here why is this not working ah yeah so here it doesn't work because this is still a normal jsx uh, div element but we want to make it a motion component so we'll say motion.div make sure that the last closing tag is also motion and now if we save here let's double check and now you can see it's very smooth Right, really buttery smooth for me. I hope it comes across the video as well because I'm recording video here, so I'm not sure if it's as smooth on the video. But from my perspective here, it looks very smooth. Now, the only thing I don't like is it's a bit too much. So, so what I mean by that is the scaling basically starts from a very low number like zero. And maybe it's a bit too much, so maybe it should start already a little bit bigger so it's a bit more subtle. And the same with opacity, it starts off almost invisible and immediately goes to like completely one opacity. So that's a very large range that it's animating basically. And it's it's not really it's not as subtle as I like the animations to be. So we can this scroll y progress that we get is actually a special motion value. And we can change that a little bit so that the scale and opacity here that are using that are animated a little bit more subtly. And actually what we also want sometimes is that the scale is, is, is animated slightly different from the opacity, right? So that's, we can do that immediately here as well, like this. So what we're gonna do is, there's another hook that Frame Motion gives us is use transform. So we can transform that scale Y progress that we get from use scroll. And actually I already got a suggestion here. So you put in the scroll Y progress, right? So that's what we need to uh, provide. And then there's two other values. So this skill, the scroll Y progress will go from zero to one, right? So that's what we're putting here. And then what we actually want the transformation to be is that for the scaling here, that it doesn't start at absolute zero. Right? So it's, it, it, it doesn't start from an, act, an actual scale of zero, but maybe let's say 0 0.5 and it goes to one, right? So what this will give us, that's, we'll use that for the scale. So we can just get scale progress and we need to import this no suggestions use transform from frame motion make sure you import that and then we can use this value the, the transformed value for scale so if we do that let's see if that works so now you can see that it doesn't start off so small it starts off a little bit bigger and it's a little bit smoother i think maybe more subtle not it doesn't it, do, it doesn't travel such a large range during the animation now, it's the same story with the opacity. I don't want it to start at a, such a low value. So we're also going to transform the opacity. So let's duplicate this line. I'm gonna put my cursor on this line and then hold Shift, Alt, Down arrow key to duplicate it. And we can say opacity progress. Right now, maybe we can even change it here. We'll make this 0 0.6. So this should start not at zero, but at let's say 0 0.6. And actually let's change the scale because it's still a little bit much. Let's actually change this to uh, 0 0.8. So, so now, oh, actually, we should still change this value. So opacity should get opacity progress, right? So I changed the value for scale as well to 0 0.8. So now it's going to start off, you know, significantly bigger. But I think it's going to be more subtle. Yeah, this looks better, right? So now it's it's way subtler, right? So you can play around with use transform to transform that uh, scroll Y progress value that we get, which is just basically a raw indicator of how much we've scrolled in. You sometimes want to transform that, right? It's a bit more advanced. But uh, I think we have a nice result. All right, so really uh, slick, I think.
yeah, I, th I really like this effect. I'm going to use it much more in my uh, design now that I've learned this. So uh, I hope you like it as well. By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful real-world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you want to be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.